Hi, this is a tutorial for Max, model-based analysis of ChipSeq. I will give you a brief introduction of what is ChipSeq and how you can use Max to analyze ChipSeq data and finally a data analysis of ChipSeq data with Max. ChipSeq is a very popular technique that is used in genomics which couples chromatin immunoprecipitation with tiling microarrays or next generation sequencing. So the main goal of using this technique is to understand genome-wide protein-DNA interaction and to further understand gene regulation and transcription factor motif binding sites. And MAX is a very useful tool to understand the ChIP-seq data. This software was developed in X Shirley Liu's lab at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and it uses the Confident P to model the shift size. And the unique feature of this program is that it uses a dynamic Poisson distribution to model the tag distribution along the genome. So it uses a Poisson distribution with different means for different parts of the genome in order to give a robust prediction in the peaks. And it has several different functionalities. And this first one, the cold peak, is the main functionality which calls peaks from alignment results. And we are going to see a few other functionalities in the examples. So how to install and load Max package? And I will show you how to do that. So first you go to Google and type Max2. And the first hit is going to be Talu's GitHub page. He's a developer of this program. You go to install.rst. That has all the instruction on installing it. And this is how I installed it using this command pip install max2 <clears throat> and after that you can use it as a regular python package like import max2 but in the example I'm going to use it in the cluster because the input file that I'm going to use is a very large file so the way you load it in the cluster is using this module load command after installing it and my example is from a gypsy data from an experiment investigating the circadian recruitment of histone deacetylase 3 and its effect on liver metabolism. So before calling the peaks, you have to do these two steps, filtering the duplicates and sampling it down. <clears throat> the reason for filtering duplicates is that when you conduct a genome analysis with PCR, there might be some reads that are disproportionately amplified. So in order to get rid of those peaks and reduce the PCR bias, we filter the duplicates. And we use this functionality filter tool. And this is my input file, minus i. And by minus g, I specify the genome size. Since my experiment files are from a mouse genome, I'm going to say mm. And then this is to say how many duplicates to keep in one position and the default is one and usually people use one and this is my output file and I do the same thing for the control file after filtering the duplicates I have to sample down if my treatment file versus the control file have different number of reads that itself can introduce bias so I'm going to sample down the files for that I use this command ran sample and this is the biggest file among the two so I'm going to sample down this controller.bet file by this amount so this is the number of reads in the smallest file and this is my output file and I will show you why I need to sample down by showing you the number of reads in the control file which is about 11.8 million and in the treatment file, it's about 8.8 .8 million. So there's a 3 million difference. And after I sample down the control file, there are about 8.8 .8 million reads again. They might not be the same, but we don't expect it. And if it's fine if they are on the same ballpark. And after doing those two steps, we are ready to call the peaks. 
And when I say calling the peaks is that when you have a treatment group and you use a tiling arrays to hybridize all the reads, at the transcription binding site, most of them are going to stack on top of each other and it's the signal is going to be very high. And as you move away from it, the signal is going to go down. But in the control file, it's going to be scattered around everywhere and it's going to be just noise. So by comparing these two peaks at the, at the position between control and the treatment, you can identify the transcription binding sites. So for that, I use this call peak command and this is my treatment file. That's my control file. I specify the format of the file, which is the bed format. And again, the size of the genome. And this is the, the stem name of the file. So after doing call peaks, I'm going to get five different files. So this, uh, there's an R file, a peaks.bed file, a peaks.end code peak file, an Excel file, and a summit.bed file. So each of these files will give you different results about ChIP-seq data, and then you can use the information obtained from these files with the differential expression of your gene to understand further about the transcription factor binding. So that's a very brief example of using Max to conduct ChIP-seq data analysis. And to learn more about, you can go to the Max homepage Tyler's GitHub page that I showed you earlier, or the Python package index for Max2. And this is the paper that talks about the Max package, which is a very useful reading if you're going to use Max for further analysis of Gypsy. Thank you very much.